In this episode, we're taking a look at one of the coolest and most useful simulations in Blender, Dynamic Paint. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. This week, as stated 10 seconds ago, we're taking a look at Dynamic Paint and what you can use it for. I'm actually kind of surprised at how often people really use Dynamic Paint. It's got a bunch of great features, yet it seems to go relatively unnoticed, and I find that extremely strange. Regardless, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So what even is Dynamic Paint? Well, Dynamic Paint is a physics modifier which allows you to assign certain objects as brushes and other objects as canvases, and then draw with the brush. Of course, that's just a very basic explanation, and there's a lot more you can do with it than just draw pretty pictures on your mesh, but that is Dynamic Paint in its most basic form. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, and look at exactly what it can do. I think it's funny, in the script, I just wrote Dynamic Pain. Okay, so I've set up a pretty basic apparatus here. We have these two empties, one's just spinning in a circle, the other one is spinning the ball up and down, determining where it's going, and it's crossing through this plane. So we're gonna set up dynamic paint on this so that it creates a cool result, hopefully. And this should demonstrate all the features that dynamic paint has. So the canvas object is going to be our plane here, right? And our brush object is going to be the sphere. So the sphere is going to be drawing on the canvas whenever it touches it. So let's go into the dy or let's first go into the physics tab and let's go and add some dynamic paint settings. Uh, by default, you have to choose either canvas or brush. And right now I have the sphere selected. So we want a brush for that. So I'll click add brush. You can see it gives us some settings down here. We aren't really gonna go over too many of these because we really don't need to. More importantly is the canvas. The canvas is what contains all of the settings. So by adding a canvas, you can see we get a whole list of settings of the ways that this can interact with our brush. So the first thing we're gonna look at here is the format. There are two different ways that Dynamic Paint works. One with vertex data and two with a UV unwrapped, or I guess UV wrapped image texture. So the vertex data will use the existing vertices in your scene to calculate where the sphere is touching and where it's not. So right now you can notice that there is absolutely nothing happening in the scene. This is because there are no vertices that this sphere is touching because it's not subdivided at all. Now, if I were to subdivide this a bunch like that, all of a sudden, you'll start seeing splotches where the ball hits. You can see that they're relatively low, low resolution, and this is because it's using the actual geometry of the plane. So all these different vertices are saying, have I been touched by this sphere or have I not? So this is great if you're working with a very high resolution model, but if you're trying to get really precise textures out of this, then vertex isn't your way to go. Instead, you're, want, you're gonna wanna change the format to an image sequence, and this will calculate where the ball is at any given time and export it as a bunch of image textures. You can then use these image textures in compositing or in, um, what else, in, in the node editor, all sorts of different places to get really cool results. One thing you will notice though is that we no longer see where the brush has hit and that is one of the drawbacks of using the image sequence format. Um, and there are also, it's, it's, it's pretty limited, honestly. There are a few different things you can do. You can play with the effects and stuff and the initial color and the output. Well, the output settings are kind of mandatory. Um, but really there isn't too much you can do when it comes to image sequence. The fun is in the vertex mode. So we're gonna switch back to vertex mode and we're gonna subdivide this plane even more. That way we get a relatively high resolution. Okay, maybe too much. Let's just do one more, there we go. That way you get a relatively high resolution model here. I wanna show you guys some of the really cool things that you can do with this and some of the, just, it's, it's a lot of fun to play with. So, uh, down here in the advanced dynamic paint settings, we have the surface type. And this allows us to choose what we wanna do with our dynamic paint object. So right now it's set to paint, which means when it's touching the surface, when our brush is touching the surface, it's just, you know, leaving a line. But we can make it a little bit more fun by using something like displace. Now, when our model hits, it leaves a dent. I think this is one of the coolest features by far. Um, it does have some issues when you try and leave a hole. Uh, just kind of stops um, but this is really useful for say you wanted a meteor coming in and just impacting the ground and leaving a dent or you want to do something where it's like punching a hole in metal or something like this this is a feature you could use and if i turn on smooth shading here maybe even add a subsurf modifier even though it makes things a little bit laggy it does start to look pretty dang nice which is really impressive now i'm gonna get rid of that because i don't want that 
Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and look at some of the other fun things we can do with this, which is weight painting. Just kidding, weight painting is not very exciting, but if you want to, you can weight paint, use that for a variety of different things, whether that's particle spawning or for armature weighting. So if you want like a certain part of your character to move more when it hit an object, I don't know. Uh, there are there's so many uses for this uh, that go relatively unnoticed and it's almost hard to think of. Uh, and the last one is waves. And this is one that I think is really spectacular. This is something that a lot of people don't realize. They want realistic fluid surface simulations, but they only want the surface. And this is something that can do that. It creates actual waves, right? It's not just normal, it is actual geometry displacement, um, replicating waves when an object impacts it. And this is great for a boat driving in the water or Gosh, I don't know. There's so much you could simulate rain hitting if you have a bunch of particles hitting this You would have a rain hitting it and then it creates a ripple which would create a, like a puddle almost it would be There's so much stuff that you can do with this. This is this is why I love this so much is just because there's so much stuff And you can also do things like open up the borders so that ripples will travel out and they don't reflect back Which is definitely a useful feature um, And all sorts of things Stop being loud. Oh my gosh, that person's car is loud. All right, so I'm actually gonna switch back to the paint mode just because it's the easiest to demo and it looks kinda nice. And we're gonna look at some of the special effects that we can add, that sounds bad, not special effects, some of the effects that we can add um, onto our dynamic paint. So we get three different settings down here. We have spread, drip, and shrink. So we're first gonna look at spread. And what spread does is it causes the paint to spread. That kind of makes sense, you know? But you can change things like spread speed and the sp color spread, how far it actually spreads, um, which are all great features to have. Additionally, we can do things like change how much it drips, which makes it basically move towards or move in the direction of gravity. So if I were to tilt this plane up like this, you can see that when it leaves its mark, the paint now drips down, which would be really helpful for simulating, say, a wetness map. So you have like a ball rolling across a table and the water kind of spreads downhill. That would be something that would be really cool to simulate with this. And kind of the opposite of spread, we have shrink, which, let me you know, get rid of the rotation here, which basically causes the things to shrink in on themselves and then eventually disappear. So with that being said, I encourage you to try and use dynamic paint in one of your projects. For sure, you'll realize how useful it can be. Um, and I'll probably create a few different tutorials just using dynamic paint in the future. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. If you guys want to become a true master of Blender, head over to cgcookie.com and hook yourself up with a subscription for tons of tutorials, courses, community stuff, all that. It's great. CG Cookie. Oh my gosh, I want to make a CG Wookie. Woohoo! <laughs>